In the August 24th edition of the Journal of Cell Biology, Go Jung and John Hammer III from the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, together with Margaret Titus from the University of Minnesota, investigate how a myosin motor protein directs the movements of a specialized osmoregulatory organelle in dictyostelium. Most protozoa, probably all protozoa, have an organelle called the contractor vacuole, which is required to expel excess water from the cytosol, which enters the cell when, for example, the cell is in rainwater. In dictyostelium, it's this highly pleomorphic, dynamic system of interconnected tubules and swollen bladders. This electron micrograph captures the complex network of cisterni and tubules that make up the contractile vacuole system. And what this membrane contains in it is a powerful proton pump, which pumps protons into the lumen of the contractile vacuole. And that generates an osmotic gradient, which draws the water out of the cytosol and into the lumen. And you get regions where the network swells into what's called a bladder. Then they undergo a transient contact to the plasma membrane, where they contact some kind of water channel. And the water is expelled and the bladder membrane collapses. And then this collapsed membrane undergoes this dramatic transition to outwardly radiating tubules, which move across the cortical actin network. So it seemed in principle to be a really nice system to look for myosin-dependent membrane movements, since it appears that a lot of the movements of these membranes would be along the actin cortex and presumably driven by a myosin motor. The researchers had previously identified a type 5 myosin in dictyostelia called MyoJ. When they raised an antibody to the motor protein, they found that it localised to contractile vacuole membranes. So the team then generated dictyostelia that lacked MyoJ. The first thing you obviously want to know is if you get rid of this myosin, does this membrane compartment care? Is there any obvious physiological consequences of deleting this motor from the cell? And so, for example, if you take the null cells and you challenge them with water, which is the most challenging hypoosmotic media you can put them in, and you test how well they survive, they, they clearly do much worse than wild-type cells. So the system requires this myosin for efficient function of the system, and it requires the myosin for the normal steady-state distribution of the membranes in the cortex of the cell. A GFP-labelled membrane marker showed that contractile vacuole membranes accumulated in the centre of cells lacking MyoJ rather than at the actin-rich cortex. The rare vacuoles it did localise to the edge of knockout cells were non-motile, and after expelling their water, they refilled in the same spot rather than spreading out across the cortex. But most contractile vacuole membranes in knockout cells localise near to the microtubule organising centre, seen here in red. When we saw in the mutant that the membranes accumulated around the centrosome, we asked, well, I mean, they must be moving on microtubules. And to look for that, we moved up deeper into the cell where you can catch in a single focal plane, microtubules are running from the cortex to the, to the centrosome, to the microtubule organizing center. And once we did that, we saw these membranes moving bidirectionally on, on microtubules. Previous studies on contractile vacuole dynamics had understandably focused on the dramatic action at the cell cortex. But when Hammer and his colleagues looked deeper into wild-type cells, they saw membranes moving from the centrosome to the cell cortex and vice versa. In knockout cells, however, contractile vacuoles travelled out to the cell cortex along microtubules but couldn't stay there in the absence of MyoJ. A similar effect was seen when wild-type cells were treated with cytochalasin to depolymerize the actin-rich cortex. This suggested that MyoJ captures contractile vacuoles at the cell periphery by anchoring them to the actin cytoskeleton. Reintroducing a GFP-tagged version of MyoJ to knock out cells restored the normal distribution of vacuole membranes. Moreover, rescued cells regain the ability to spread out their contractile vacuoles across the cell cortex after discharging water at the cell surface. But now that you can complement this phenotype, you can ask, okay, what part of this motor is important for this complementation and specifically trying to prove that a myosin actually moves a particular membrane. The most elegant way to do this is to complement with versions of your motor which are mechanochemically compromised in some way and then ask do you see a corresponding or predicted change in the dynamics of the membrane system. Cells rescued with a version of MyoJ lacking motor activity could capture contractile vacuoles at the cell periphery 
but their bladders were unable to radiate out into tubules after expelling water. A truncated version of MyoJ that takes shorter steps along actin filaments was able to drive this process, but the tubules spread out more slowly than they did in the presence of full-length MyoJ. We took that as pretty strong evidence that the myosin is actually the motor that's moving these membranes along the cortex. And this is a nice result because a lot of unconventional myosins are thought to be organelle motors, and there's really not that much data that they are, including for myosin 5. So I think this is, this is at least a clear example of where a type 5 myosin is. It's a point-to-point organelle motor that's translocating membranes along actin. So I think one of the next questions for this MyoJ contractive vacuum system would be to ask, how is the actin organized on the cortex to allow this radial translocation of these tubules out from the point of bladder collapse. Presumably, there's some kind of radial organization of the actin around the fusion pore uh, in which the barbed ends are primarily facing away from the fusion pore, and this provides tracks for this radial movement. You can read more about how MyoJ controls the cortical association and motility of contractile vacuoles in the August 24th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.